angle relationships, writing algebraic equations. All right, the key to writing algebraic equations is to take what you've already learned, problems that just had numbers, and apply it to situations where there's variables thrown in instead. Let's take a look at an example. The directions say write an equation that could be used to solve for x. Now, I know some of you immediately start to look at this and you're like, oh my goodness, I am totally confused. Let's make it less confusing. Think back to when we just call angles like angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, and let's apply that to this problem. So instead of those ugly looking algebraic expressions, let's just say we had angle one and angle two. Do you know the relationship of those two angles? Well, you probably notice the square. The square means a right angle. And if it's a right angle over here on the right, then we could shift that over the straight line and make it a right angle here on the left. And then you'll notice angle one and angle two, they would add together to equal that 90 degree square. They are what we call a pair of complementary angles. So the first angle plus the second angle is equal to 90 degrees in this situation. Now, let's put it back to what they originally were called. Instead of angle one, it was four X plus two. Instead of angle two, it was seven X. The same math still applies. The first angle, four X plus two, plus the second angle, seven X, will equal 90 degrees. And there you go. There's an algebraic equation for this situation. Let's do another one. Here we are given that we have parallel lines, A and B, and we're asked to write an equation that could be used to solve for X. All right, again, some kids get scared when they see these algebraic expressions. So let's say they were just angles one and two. Do you know the relationship of these two angles? Well, angle one is here in this corner, and if I slide it across the transversal, I will see it's in a matching position as angle two. Angles in matching positions are what we call corresponding angles. And the reason we care about that is because corresponding angles are congruent, which means the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two, which means the first angle was equal to the second angle. So let's get rid of these temporary markers of angle one and angle two, put them back to what they used to be, eight X and nine X minus 10. They need to be set equal to each other because that's what corresponding angles are, congruent angles. All right, next one, same drawing. Line A, line B, they're parallel. Write an equation that could be used to solve for X. All right, again, if it was confusing seeing the algebraic expressions, let's just call it angles one and two. Now, I hope you can notice on this drawing that these two angles, one and two, are opposite angles formed by these two intersecting lines that I highlighted for you in yellow. We call those types of angles vertical angles. Why do we care? Because vertical angles are congruent, which means their measures are equal to each other. So the first angle was equal to the second angle. Remember that first angle was originally called 5x. That second angle was originally called x plus 66. So we're just gonna set them equal to each other to get our equation. All right, one more problem, and this one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Again, lines A and B, this time they're going horizontal, they are parallel. We're gonna write an equation that could be used to solve for x. And once again, let's just call those two angles, angle one, angle two. What's their relationship this time? Well. This one's a little bit more challenging. Angle two definitely appears to be obtuse, bigger than 90. Angle one appears to be acute, less than 90. However, if I realize that angle two could also be this angle here, because they're corresponding angles to each other, matching positions, then I will notice that I actually have a pair of supplementary angles, two angles that together would make a straight angle that would add up to equal 180 degrees. Because remember, this angle in red is the same as angle two. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two would equal 180 degrees, the straight angle. In other words, the first angle plus the second angle is equal to 180. Well, what was that first angle originally called? 2x plus five. What was that second angle originally called? 3x minus one. So we are gonna add those two angles together equal to 180 
Because they together formed a straight angle, they were a pair of supplementary angles.